going on guys if I'm talking fast I'm trying to get this done before I go to jujitsu I wanted to show you guys if you have not seen this already how to add a rec 709 look to your s log 3 profile what is rec 709 I'm sure you guys have seen it if you've done any sort of editing color grading I'm sure you have seen rec 709 you're like what the hell is that and just ignore it and keep it moving instead of googling it and trying to figure it out what you guys should be doing Rec 709, just to get into it real quickly, so I keep this video short, is just the stand, standard color profile for those high res videos. There's a Rec 709 LUT that you can put on your high resolution videos, which can give you just a better baseline for your color grading. I know when I was color grading S-Log3 early on, I was making that footage look horrible. I was just like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know why people are using this eventually got a little bit better but still when you start having LUTs and you start putting LUT profiles on your S-Log3 footage it can just give you a nice baseline to start with it starts to adjust the saturation starts adjusting the contrast so now you just have a better foundation to work on depending on how much time I got in this video I'll show you two ways on how you can add the LUT to your footage the first way the traditional way you're going to go to the Sony website most big camera companies, you go to their website, not only can you get the firmware updates, but they have LUT profiles as well. You're gonna go to the Sony, I shoot on Sony cameras, you're gonna go to their website, you're gonna download the file that is connected to the color profile that you use. For me, it's S-Log3, S-Gamut3, Cine. Download it. Download it to some place that you're gonna remember. We're gonna hop back into Premiere. This is a shot from Thailand. When I was out there, which was a great time. So this is how the S-Log3 usually works. And then we start trying to adjust those curves and get the contrast right. And it's looking horrible. So what we're going to do, throw adjustment layer on top, bring it over, go into your Lumetri color. We're going to go input LUT. We're going to go browse. You're going to select the file that is the same as your color profile, which means it is the S-Log3 S-Gamut Cine. And look at that boom so before right out the gate after before after just like that All right and now you have now you have the ability to start working and start color grading and start putting your touch on it but at least you have a nice foundation to work with right and then you can go from there but even this doesn't look horrible just a few adjustments and this can go out you know pretty pretty quickly just a few tweaks you know i would adjust the shadows a little bit and things like that but once again it's all to your liking it's all to your style it's all with your creativity and what you want to do okay so the second way to do it which i guess the first way is more of the standard the second way is what uh people are been doing more often uh, it's becoming more of a newer way to do it and also they said because it doesn't take out your highlights it doesn't clip the highlights it does hold a little bit more data when you're going to do this way that i'm going to show you if you go now to your project bin and you right click the footage that you want to modify we're going to go into interpret footage so i right clicked modify interpret footage I'm sure you guys have seen this before. If you have ever tried to adjust the frame rates, you guys, should, you guys would come here. I was shooting on 60 frames, you can adjust it to 24. If you scroll all the way down, color management, and you click color space override, you see it's on Rec. 709. Now, look at this. Sony S-Log3 S-Gamut Cine. Select it, hit OK. Uh, Look at that. Same result. I kind of like the first way a little bit better. It depends. If I'm do doing like a tutorial, want to show you guys how to do it, more like A and B side by side, I would probably use the first method. But if you notice with the second message, I'll, se second method, I'm able to just get right into the footage. I don't have to download files, create adjustment layers. I can act, honestly put it right into the footage. So once again, all depends on what you're trying to do, what you want to do. Uh, most people from what I've been reading saying this is a better way, but once again, it will yield the same results. I do think the second version 
has a slight advantage over the traditional version uh, to the point of, yes, those highlights and just losing some of the data. So if I'm not trying to show you guys or have like a demonstration, I'm doing a YouTube video, I'll try to show before and after and things like that, I would probably use the second way. That probably would be my choice. But um, yeah guys, so quick video for you guys. Try it, play with it. You guys should be experimenting with LUTs, not only just from the manufacturer, but there's a ton of people who are creating these amazing LUTs that are specific to the color prof profile that you're using. Try it out. You'll be surprised what type of quality you can get out of it. And then you can put your own spin on it as well. Keeping this video short, let me get out of here. Time for jujitsu. More videos are on the way. Let's go.